Hey guys, it's Hades here and welcome back to another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be focusing on mushroom farms and how to build them. And I'm also going to add on to that and show some extra little things you can do to make it easier on yourself. So to start off, um, I've got two little rooms here because mushrooms need darkness to grow. So you can either build it underground in a cave or just make little rooms like this. Let's knock our way through this wall. As you can see, I've clearly already done it a few times. Just like that. And we are now in the mushroom farm. I'm going to open this up and let light in. Just so you guys can see better. Because I know on YouTube it makes it a bit dark. What are, the, what are you doing here, buddy? Fly! Fly away! Be free! Out the door! Oh, oh no, I don't want to hurt the poor fella. I'll let him go. Let's get back to explaining the farm. Okay. So. I ran into a few problems while trying to auto-harvest the mushrooms. Because... If any of you are my subscribers, you will know that I like to make auto-harvesting farms. Because I don't like the manual labour of hitting the mushrooms off and collecting them. So that's why this design is good. What I did is I rose the block up by one, and then I planted the mushrooms on it. I'll get into why these fences are here in a minute, but... If I raise all the blocks up where the mushrooms are being planted, then I can, I can put water like this. And that'll harvest all the mushrooms that grow along here and bring them to a central point. So then I can do future things once they're down there. And we've got a couple growing here, so that's good. And the reason why I have the fence posts there is because there is mushroom caps. So I think it's about... I think it's... I don't know the exact blocks on this, guys. But the point of it is, the less mushrooms you have up here, the, the more mushrooms you can fit in this little area. Because they don't keep growing until every block is full. They get capped. And so I think it's a 9 a nine square radius the cap is. So the less mushrooms I have up here, the more that will be allowed to grow down here. So you, if you just heard that information, you would think, why don't you only have one mushroom in, up here then? Because then you could grow more down here. But it also grows quicker the more mushrooms you have up here. So I've got three up here. And I realised that about a mushroom fence post, mushroom fence post, is about the quickest rate you can get. So you still get the quick growing rate of having multiple mushrooms up here on your farming lane. And you also get the advantage of having it not taking up too much spaces. And you still get some good growth down here for the harvesting lanes. So now that I've explained that, hopefully you understand it. I'll just copy this design, just go fence post mushroom. And all these ones up here are what are not going to get carried down by the water. All the ones that grow down here are going to be carried by water. Alrighty, so let's do a quick test of where water runs to. Because we want it to go exactly the right amount of blocks. There, so that, that go, as we can see, that does go an extra block. So that's good to know. So we can essentially knock out another block behind this. Do that. Knock out these. And we're going to put pistons here. Just like that. Sorry about the background noise, guys. Once you put pistons there, you can cover it back up. And let's head around to the outside of the base now. So I can hook these pistons up for some automatic farm action. Now that I've shown you how to make it, let's show you how to harvest it automatically. We'll dig our way down here so we get access to the pistons. Now most people know how to hook up pistons. But for those who don't, there's some really simple circuits. Look at that. Okay, well, that's a bad example. I need to put it on this block, but I can't. So, looks like we're going to have to use repeaters to power the blocks underneath the pistons. That's just as easy to do it. Just because I did have to change that up because I didn't realise that block actually led into the farm. But whatever. We're all good. There's your little setup. You power it, the pistons will go up. Power it, the pistons will go down. So now that we've done that, let's fly back into here, knock these out, and we're going to put... How did that happen? What the? Do I have... I got pistons under there from my last little circuit I was doing. Wow, I got trolled massive then. Well, they sure screwed up my little test bench here. But let's just replant this again. Just like that. As you can see, I did the opposite. If it's a fence post here, I put a mushroom there. It's just the blocks 
technically they're further away, it doesn't really help. And you can put any blocks here, so I'm just going to put dirt here, even though you don't need to. Alright, so let's deck this out with water. Now, the mushrooms won't grow if there's water there though. So what you want to do, is you want to have this turned off by default. Well, on. Pistons off. On, whatever. <laughs> you get the point. And, as you can see... Well, get out of here, how does this keep activating? What have I got down here? Well, okay. Let's just delete all this. This was from my previous design, guys, which I ended up scrapping, because I found this one to be much more efficient. Delete all that. Irrelevant. Let's go back to our little thing. That was the collection point where I'm hoping to bring it to. And by collection point... Alright. So, I've hooked up one alleyway now. But you can do the exact same thing for the circuit down there. And the exact same thing over there. And this is pretty much it. That's one farm totally done. These mushrooms will spread down here eventually. These ones will spread down here. And then you want to... You can either flick the lever to bring the water in. Or test it by dumping some of these here. And we'll have it funnel down into... Down here somewhere. So there we go. Alrighty. So... Here is a manual way of doing it. The water does bring it all into one central point for you, but it's not automatic. If you do want to make it automatic, there's some really simple things you can do. Hook up a daylight sensor to it. Just chuck that there. Chuck some redstone feeding into that, and that'll do it instead of the lever. Or if you want a lever hooked up to it as well, you can just do that. Bam. Alright? So does that make sense? If not, I'll try and explain it a bit more, but for now... Let's just see if it worked. So, we've been waiting a long time, the mushrooms have grown, and we want to harvest it. So we flick this lever. You can bring that redstone around to the front so you didn't have to walk, but this is just for example's sake. As you can see, the mushrooms got washed down there if I wasn't standing there. You can hit that block if you really want to. Just like that. Hopefully that mushroom slowly goes down there. There's a lot of different ways to funnel stuff though. I'm not going to get into that too much this episode. Because I don't think I really need to. You can look up mob farms and they all require the same amount of funneling. There we go, that'll do the job. That'll get all the mushrooms where we want them. So as you can see it harvested all the mushrooms. And washed it down that water stream. To meet us down here. This is where the mushrooms will end up. So we're going to test this again. Now that I've made some adjustments to the water stream, by turning it off first, of course, just like that. We wait for some more mushrooms to grow, and no, 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 it's been a couple hours, this, this place is packed full of mushrooms now, all good for the harvesting. We go back around here, flick the lever, come around here, and there goes the mushrooms. Do, do, do. We're watching them all, they're all getting harvested. There they are. They're falling down there. And we stand here and collect them all. Look at that. Here they all come. All right to our feet. The easiest collection method, method possible. Look at them all. Now you can hook this up to a hopper system like I have in my single player world. Then hook that up to an automatic sorting system so you can sort the red mushrooms into one chest, the brown ones into another chest. But that's obviously a, a bit more advanced so I'm not going to get into that this episode. But at least I've showed you how to automatically harvest them. So if you're standing here and you hooked up this daylight sensor, that would work. That would be an automatic harvesting system. During the night it would harvest, during the day it would have water there. So it's not the most efficient. You would obviously want to hook up a different timer to it. But I just set a, a default example one, so at least you know. I would probably suggest like a pumpkin type timer. I've got tutorials on that on my channel. Or even just a massive clock. Either one will do you well. And Automatic Farmer right here. Hopefully that explained it to you guys in a fairly easy way. Now I'm going to get on to this next little farm I have here. As you can see, I just kind of ruined it and hit that block. But this is a different way of doing it. As you can see, I have, I mean, I'm using the fence post idea. Which makes it so you get more mushrooms per the farming area. And behind these blocks is the water, which would obviously have pistons, and they go down into this hole. You want to wonder why the water isn't going into these blocks, like it normally does. 
That is because if you do it the right amount of blocks away, that's counting it. One, two, well, one, two, three, four, five. And if you're on the sixth, the sixth block, you make a hole, then the water will rush straight to the hole instead of knocking all these other mushrooms out. So this is also a fairly efficient farm that I'd recommend to anyone. It's just another way of doing the farm. If you don't like the other design, this is another way of doing it. Of course, you'd have to have pistons pushing these blocks up so you didn't have to manually knock them out. But that's the basic idea. Then it gets washed down here and into this little farm down here. It's as simple as that, guys. There's two easy methods to making a mushroom farm. And that's where you would hook up the clock to your circuit if you wanted to make it automatic. And of course, I showed you how to make the water wash it all to one spot so you can hook it up to a hopper system. And if you're interested in any of those other type of circuits, like the clock or the hopper system, just go watch my single player world or my other tutorials. As you can see, I have a lot of redstone tutorials around here. I've done a lot on my channel. Yeah, looking back at this is bringing back memories. Whoever remembers this one was with me since the start. That is the worst. There's a lot better circuits than that now. What is this one? Oh, wow. This, that's, this is a bit broken, but... This was a way to send redstone over long signals. So the normal redstone can only go 16 blocks. But if you use this tripwire slash boat way, you could, you could effectively transmit signals really long distances to activate pistons. Actually, let's see if it still works. Yeah, it does. So that piston activated all the way over there. And it's an invisible line. There was no redstone. Of course, you can just see it. But it's long distance red... Anyway, I'm getting way off topic here. Mushroom farms are good. Build yourself a mushroom farm. Join my service. Sell the mushrooms to the shops. And have a great day, guys. And I'll see you later.